Vena Tasmai Shri Guna Vena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvise Sasunya Vadi Pasyatya De Satarine Ancha Kalpa Tu Vishya Kriba Sindhu Vedacha Paditanam Bhavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namahonama Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai I always wanted to be a flower child. <laughs> okay. So yesterday we did a overview of the eight verses of Shikshastaka, giving a general understanding of what it consists of. And now we'll go verse by verse. And it, And one thing which I mentioned, and I want to really emphasize that these eight verses are non different than the holy name. <laughs> And actually, it is incumbent upon each and every one of us to learn these verses. Around the world, in every temple, practically, we recite these verses daily as part of the morning program. Which really and shows how essential they are for our practice of devotional service. Simply, simply re by reciting these verses, it inspires us and energizes us in chanting of the Holy Name. <laughs> This is, these words are spoken by the Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself. So we'll do the first verse together. Okay, just re, I'm going to repeat just part of it and then you respond to that part. Cheta Darpanam Marjanam Bhava Mahadevagni Nivapanam Shreya Kaivava Chandrika Vidharanam Vidya Vadu Jeevanam Anandam Bodhi Vardhanam Pratipadam Purnam Rita Swadhanam Sarvatma Snaparam Param Vijayate Shri Krishna Sankirtanam Translation This is the translation that is given. There's two translation, the one we are, we are commonly known and the one that's given in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. So the one I have here is different than the one up there, so. So maybe you can respond to the one I say. Let there be all victory for the chanting of the holy name of Lord Krishna. Which cleanses the mirror of the heart and stops the miseries of the blazing fire of material existence. 
That chanting is the waxing moon that, chanting is the waxing moon. that spreads the white lotus of good fortune for all living entities. It is the life and soul of all education. The chanting of the holy name of Krishna expands the blissful ocean of transcendental life, gives a cooling effect to everyone, and enables one to taste full nectar at every step. So that's the, the translation that's actually given in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Either one, you can chant either one of the translations. They're both considered to be authorized. So in this first verse, as we were describing, the entire process of bhakti is mentioned in that in this whole verse. To clarify, the entire benedictions of all of the benedictions that are essential or primary are mentioned in these first uh, first verse. This, the seven benedictions that are... Uh, the word Sankirtan has two meanings. Kirtan means to glorify the Lord. And San means together. But there's a qualitatively point that is being made in the definition of the word San. Which, which is really the perfect explanation. And what is that? <laughs> that there is no better or more recommended way to glorify the Lord than Kirtan. <laughs> Out of all of the ways listed throughout the Vedas, this is primary. <laughs> and gives effect to everyone in a very direct way. <laughs> the word kirtan comes from the etymological root word kirti. You know, there are girls who get the name Kirti. <laughs> they name their children, ladies specifically, Kirti. And Kirti means fame. So those who engage in Sankirtan are actually spreading the fame of the all-glorious Lord. <laughs> so when we're chanting the holy name, although we're just sounding the names of the Lord, we're actually spreading, spreading the glories of the Lord through that sound vibration. Which is the topmost and high, most recommended way to glorify the Lord. <laughs> it benefits the chanter. It benefits those who hear. And it purifies the atmosphere around. And it pleases Krishna, <laughs> which is the essence of the practice of kirtan, <laughs> to please Krishna. Want to, we want to please the Lord because by pleasing the Lord, everything becomes wonderful. <laughs> so this is the most direct, easiest, and most recommended way to please the Lord is chant his holy name. Mm -hmm. 
it's more than just the process of bhakti, it is bhakti itself. <laughs> you might say that the chanting of the holy name is the process of pure devotional service. And the benefits that one receives by chanting is what we say unlimited. We hear that Krishna, the Supreme Lord, is unlimited. We understand unlimited by understanding limited. We know we are limited. <laughs> and everyone around us is limited. <laughs> so we get an understanding of what is limited. And by definition, everything outside of that is unlimited. <laughs> so Krishna is unlimited in all aspects of himself. But to, to taste the unlimited nature of Krishna, one has to approach him by the holy name. <laughs> by chanting the holy name, it opens up the door to the unlimited, unlimited. <laughs> and one who makes a regular practice of that also becomes, in one sense, unlimited. Because when you connect with something unlimited, you also take on those qualities to a, to a large degree. Give you a material example. We all ride in a plane, right? How many of us have rode in planes, you know? Yeah, it's common, especially for devotees to travel around. And the planes, how fast do they go? <laughs> 200, 300 miles an hour? That's, no, that's more than that, right? Five hundred miles an hour. But if someone asks you, can you go five hundred miles an hour? You think, what a stupid question. <laughs> but if you connect with the plane, you're going 500 miles an hour. So when we connect with Krishna, who's unlimited, our limited qualities become more and more revealed, and they become almost as unlimited as Krishna, but not quite. <laughs> And that quality is through the chanting, or that experience is through the chanting of the Holy Name. So in this first verse, there are seven benedictions. And they're written here in this, the actual Sanskrit spoken by Lord Chaitanya. Chaito Darpanam Marjanam. Cheta means mind, means heart, either one. Darpanam means mirror. And marginum means to clean. So the mind is like a mirror. No two people see the external environment in the same way. <laughs> and no two people experience the external environment in the exact same way. So, so we say this material reality, to use a word, is subjective. <laughs> 
e noi diciamo che la realtà materiale è soggettiva. I see it this way, you see it that way. Io vedo in un modo, voi vedete in un altro. So the mind is like that. It, it reflects what's inside, outside. La mente è così, riflette ciò che c'è dentro all'esterno. Just like, I mean, that's an easy understanding. Just like you see something, someone says, oh, that's beautiful. And the other person says, I don't know, I, what do you see? I don't see anything beautiful. <laughs> Or, and there's so many examples of how there's differences of the same object by different people. So the mind is like that. Give you an example Prabhupada uses. How we see things in relationship to our mind and we think that is reality. <laughs> so this is the analogy Prabhupada used. There's an old man and he's, he's in his room and he's Hard of hearing, he can't hear. He's deaf. His wife, she's in the kitchen and she's cooking. He's waiting for his dinner. He calls to his wife, Jai Sisi Radha Braja Sundar Ki Jai, Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maharani Gornitai Ki Jai. He calls to his wife, my dear wife, when is dinner going to be ready? <laughs> and she's struggling, working hard to get the dinner done and she says, be quiet, read the newspaper, I'm still cooking. <laughs> After some time, he calls again to his wife, asking when the dinner is going to be ready. Again, she calls back. Shut up, you know. <laughs> and he said, and then he's starting to think, what's wrong with my wife? I'm calling her and she's not answering me. She must be deaf. <laughs> He's deaf. <laughs> he can't hear her calling. He thinks she's deaf because he can't hear it. <laughs> Reflections of the mind. <laughs> Whatever is inside is projected outside. Atmanam manyate jagat. Everyone sees the world like, everyone thinks that, the wor that we see the world just the way I see the world. <laughs> Which is the most, the grossest illusion. <laughs> so the mind is like that, therefore it's, it's got this dust, the dust is material, and material desires, material attachments. Chant the holy name with enthusiasm, with attention. Gradually you're wiping away that pure mind. You're wiping away the dust from the pure mind. And when the mind is completely pure, you see things as they are. And what is that? Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, when you thus learn the truth, you'll know that all living beings are my parts and parcels, they're in me and they're mine. You'll see Krishna in everything and everything in Krishna. That is pure consciousness. <laughs> and, that's, and that's reality. <laughs> Anything short of that is illusion. <laughs> so this is the power of the holy name. It can bring us to that level of pure consciousness. Simply. That's the first benediction.
Second benediction, Bhava Maha Devagni Nirvapanam. This material world is considered to be, as Krishna says, Dukalayam Asasratam. It's miserable. And, in, and it's temporary also. Now, when you think of temporary, you think if it's miserable and it's temporary, that's good. But if, if it's not miserable and it's temporary, that's not good. <laughs> But Krishna makes it clear, it's miserable and it's temporary. <laughs> what is it called? The um, Aryatmika, disturbances of the mind and body. Aribaltica, disturbances by other living beings. Aridaivika, disturbances by higher powers. Weather problems. Plagues, diseases, catastrophes, all of these come by way of higher powers. <laughs> Birth, death, disease, and old age. <laughs> They're there, part of the material world. <laughs> now Krishna, scriptures explain, these are the miseries of material life. <laughs> and so chant the holy name. Can you get rid of the miseries? Yes. <laughs> Completely, a hundred percent. That's the power of this chanting. That it, it, the word is push backs. The miseries are still there, but you're not affected. <laughs> and even if you're experiencing something which is defined as misery, for you, it's not misery because your consciousness is on a higher level. It's like when people go for an operation. You got any doctors here? Any doctors? No doctors? Okay. If you go to India, everybody's a doctor. <laughs> or a dentist, either one. <laughs> <laughs> the doctors, when they give you an operation, they give you an anesthesia. And you're being cut open, but you don't feel any pain. But because of the anesthesia, there's no sensation of the pain. So that's a somewhat of an analogy that although we are surrounded by and sometimes attacked by the miseries of material energy, <coughs> we don't, the effects is minimized and ultimately destroyed completely through the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamudra. If you're walking along, and you bang your toe on the ground, you'll feel pain. But if you're walking along and you're chanting and you hit bang your toe on the ground, you won't feel any pain. <laughs> That's a fact. But don't experiment with that. <laughs> Take my word, and Srila Prabhupada has also said, chanting relieves pain. <laughs> Many times Prabhupada would say, when you're in some kind of physical plane, just chant, that's all. <laughs> and you can raise your consciousness above, just like it's an anesthesia. <laughs> 
So this is just an analogy to show the power of the holy name. It can push back the effects of material uh, suffering. Baba Mahadeva Shreya Kaiva Vichandrika Vitaranam. Shreya means good fortune. Here is where your good fortune comes. Here is where your good fortune comes. We say, and it's also mentioned, that everyone has some good fortune. <laughs> Even the most unfortunate person has some good fortune. <laughs> but it's not experienced. So chant the holy name and you awaken your good fortune. The heart is compared to a lotus flower. So in this section it says Kairava. Kairava, Kairava is a type of lotus flower. All lotus flowers bloom when the sun rays come, then the lotus opens. You see, you see a beautiful lotus. But, but the Kairava is different. It's a night blooming lotus. It blooms under the rays of the moon. So when the cooling moonshine rays of the holy name comes upon the heart of the devotee, it awakens that lotus-like heart and then one experiences good fortune or happiness. <laughs> Um, so this benediction is that one reveals that good fortune. Now we're moving along. Each one of these benedictions is going higher and higher on the process of bhakti. <laughs> Because we explained how there are nine stages of bhakti and the different benedictions actually take you from one stage to another. And what is that good fortune? You meet your spiritual master. <laughs> and you accept his shelter and you engage in devotional service. So that's analogous to this particular section. Shreya Kaiva Vichandrika Vitaranam. The fourth benediction is Vidya Vidu Jivanam. Vidya means knowledge. Vidu means bride. So there is the bride and there's the bridegroom. <laughs> So on the wedding day, the bridegroom, I mean the bride, becomes very happy in the presence of the bridegroom. <laughs> and she becomes enlivened. <laughs> so this analogy, it's a computer analogy, vidya means knowledge or transcendental knowledge. And vidu also means life. So transcendental knowledge is given life by the chanting of the holy name. The best way to study for a class is chant the holy name. <laughs> yeah. 
of course, we also try to ch study and get our facts together so we can present something. <laughs> but if you chat, then Krishna will also reveal to you that knowledge in the heart through the process of chanting. That's the power of the holy name. It, it helps you understand and practice that knowledge which you are exposed to through the books, through the lectures. The next one, the next benediction is Anandam Bhuri Vardhanam. Ananda, ah, Ananda. We name people Ananda because they look happy, so we give them that name, Ananda. <laughs> then after some time they're not happy, we call them near Ananda. <laughs> <laughs> but Ananda means bliss. <laughs> not just happiness, but that happiness that is foremost or topmost. So, Bodhi means deep, and Vardhana means ocean. So there's an unlimited ocean of happiness that is available through the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. When I come here, one thing I love to do I love to have kirtan here. This is a real kirtan temple. <laughs> and I just think, wow. You know, Villa Vrindavan, kirtan, wow. <laughs> it's, got, it's got shakti. This place has shakti. Kirtan. Did you see the ladies dancing last night? My God, I thought they were going to fly up in the air. <laughs> They were, they looked like flamingos flying out in the air. I didn't want to dance, I just wanted to watch, you know. <laughs> it was amazing. That'll be again tonight, so we'll see some more flying ladies. <laughs> the, men, the, men, the men can't get off the ground as fast, but they, have a, they, they push a little, but they can get out of neutral, you know. <laughs> so so uh, unlimited happiness, chanting the holy name. Radharani is there. Krishna is next to her. Krishna looks at Radha. He sees how beautiful she is. And he becomes happy. And he becomes beautiful more beautiful. Radharani looks at Krishna and sees that she, he's become more beautiful and she becomes happy and then she becomes more beautiful and then Krishna looks at Radha and sees that she's become more beautiful and he becomes more happy and then she looks back at him and he's more happy and she, because, and he, she becomes more beautiful seeing Krishna becoming more happy. <laughs> Ananda Bhuri Vardhanam, deep, it just keeps going. <laughs> I won't recommend you try that with your husband and wife, it may not go beyond one or two times, but... <laughs> <laughs> but maybe your love is deep, so maybe three or four times. <laughs> But when Radha and Krishna do it, there's no limit. <laughs> so yeah, so back to the essence, the Anandam Bhuti Vardhanam. That part is actually the process of one is feeling the love that, that is available in the, through the chanting of the Holy Name. <laughs> Patipadam Purnam Ritaswarnanam. Who are we in the spiritual world? That's revealed 
through the holy name. We have our material identity. We also have a spiritual identity, which is our real identity. Our material identities change from life to life. And even within the life itself, our identities are changing. <laughs> but one, one identity never changes. And that is we have an eternal loving relationship with Krishna in a particular mood that is eternal. By chanting and developing that uh, what we say, nam ruchi, that means that sweetness that comes by chanting the holy name. <laughs> Mahaprabhu didn't give us kirtan. He gave us prem kirtan. <laughs> that prem, that kirtan, it is full of love. <laughs> and when Mahaprabhu did kirtan, you know, everyone would, I mean, it was just mad. <laughs> So that eternal loving relationship in terms of identity is gradually revealed through the process of chanting Hare Krishna. And that's the sixth benediction. And then the final benediction is Sarvatma Snavanam. Sarva means all. Everything. Snapana means cleansing bath, a bath that is completely clean, cleans everything. So your home, your possessions, your family members, everything in relationship to you becomes cleansed through the process of the holy name. When, when you chant the holy name, you're not only benefiting yourself, you're, not, you're benefiting the whole world. <laughs> because the holy name is Krishna himself. And when you chant that holy name, you're actually spending, it's like spreading the, the what is it called? The good fortune of the, the, the blooming moon of transcendental happiness, transcendental knowledge. Now you might ask, well, that's for kirtan. What about java? <laughs> You get up in the morning, oh, another day of six. I did 16 again yesterday, I got to do it again. Oh. It's like climbing Mount Kilimanjaro with a backpack, you know. <laughs> it's, oh, so difficult. But if you practice, and you do a lot of kirtan, your japa will increase nicely. The quality of your japa will increase. Well, you look forward to your chanting. You actually come to the point of want to chant more and more. Because it's the holy name. But it's done internally, with, with, by ourselves, you might say. And so, but it is the process. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chanted Japa. But he, al he always chanted in front of a Tulsi plant. And sometimes he would walk. And he would have one of his devotees, disciples, carry a Tulsi in front of him so he could see Tulsi while he was chanting Japa. Yeah. 
Chanting in front of Tulsi brings auspiciousness and brings more and more absorption in the chanting of the Holy Name. Tulsi is very auspicious. And then, of course, these, these are the seven benedictions which align themselves with the nine processes of devotional service. And the verse ends. Sri Krishna Sankirtanam Ki It's like a, you know, operatic expression of joy. Yeah, so that's the holy name. And therefore these verses really help us. The more we know the glories of the holy name, the more we know the benefits of the holy name, the more than we know the practice of the holy name, the more we get attracted to the holy name. <laughs> And it's not Sankirtanan, it's Sri Krishna Sankirtanan. Sri stands for Radharani. So when you're saying Sri Krishna Sankirtan, you're saying Radha and Krishna, in, in glorification of Radha and Krishna. Hmm. Because Krishna is never without his internal energy. Who is the pleasure potency? And she is Bhakti Devi. And she's the one that brings us to the perfectional stage of worshiping Krishna through the holy name. Okay, so we're at the almost at the end of the class. Any questions or comments on, on these seven verses? Yeah, seven Janava Sundar. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about um, the anesthesia that we can have in our spiritual life by chanting. And it's a topic that I have been really thinking about. Um, sometimes when people have some kind of traumatic experiences in life, they numb out and they start to not feel things and not feel emotions. And they just throw themselves in a spiritual practice so that they don't feel any more the pain. But I'm just wondering, um, recently someone was telling me that there is this concept of spiritual bypass. Spiritual bypass. Yes, that you're using the spiritual practice to not think, to not solve what is inside you, but rather just running away from uh, the problem or the situation. So I'm just wondering, like, how do we understand if someone is doing a spiritual bypass to, like, escape and not feel or is actually me mahagi. There's your answer. <laughs> what well, means that Alsaudi means medicine. Did you, did you complete your question? There was more to your question? You mentioned bypass. Bypass is a medical terminology. And so when you're sick, you need medicine, right? Or you need some operation. Try, understand this one point. Everything that happens in, to us in this world, to the body, is not happening to you. It's an illusion. <laughs> an illusion in the sense that it's happened to something in relationship to you, but not to you. So if you want to get free from that, 
You, want, you have to rise above it and come to the platform of who you really are. And that is emphasized and we say understood through the spiritual process. If you want to solve a problem, if you go beyond the problem, then you solve the problem. <laughs> Some people say, well, actually it's mentioned, that there's two ways to get rid of material desires. Or there's two ways to fulfill material desires, that's the better. You have the desire, you, you think about how to fulfill it, and you go about it. But there's another way. When you get something better. When you get something better. And that's spiritual life. <laughs> so you rise above all of the difficulties by going to the platform of something better, something more wonderful, something more natural. <laughs> This world is simply an illusion. What's happening to you is not happening to you, it's happening to your body. <laughs> I mean, we have to deal with the body, right? We have, and we, we, make some, we make some adjustments. Well, you ultimately we know it's not affecting, it's not really hurting me at all, it's, it's just my body. And just like, I'll give you an example. One very powerful Vaishnava. His name was Neem Karoli Baba. Maybe some of you heard of him. He's, he's not any, on the planet anymore. But he's, uh, so, so he had one, one student whose name was Baba Ram Das. And Baba Ram Das was an American whose name was Richard Alpert. And Richard Alpert was the one that introduced LSD into the world. And he was a disciple of Neem Karoli Baba. Now, he became famous for Baba Ram Das, for, you know, LSD. So he, he was with his guru in, in India. His guru said, give me some of that LSD. So he took 10 hits of LSD. And after a time he said, am I supposed to feel something? I don't feel anything. <laughs> he was beyond that. His consciousness was way beyond that. <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> That's a true story. Yeah, so um, his consciousness was way beyond the effects of the, this, this hallucination drug. Yeah. So consciousness is really life, and the more we raise our consciousness to the spiritual platform, the more we actually come in contact with that perfect consciousness, which is Krishna consciousness, which is pure consciousness, which is free from material consciousness. <laughs> so, bypass, this pass, that pass. What I'm trying to say, I'm not minimizing your question. What I'm trying to say is, go beyond. We're not running away. If someone wants to give you medicine for your cure and you say, well, let me just, you know, I don't need any medicine, I'll just deal with it myself. 
And that's, that's really not very intelligent. <laughs> that's why, that's why Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, Eneche Asadi Asaudi. Asaudi means medicine. Eneche Asaudi Maya Nasi Badalagi Harinam Maha Mantra Lao Tumi Magi. Here's your medicine. <laughs> Chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, I've seen devotees who were, I mean, depressed, gone through a lot of turmoil, and, and, and they take the Krishna consciousness and all that becomes part of their past, that's all. So it's not an escape route, it's the, it's the way to go. <laughs> yes, Vrindavanath uh, Prabhu. So, we all agree that uh, this holy name, this Maha Mantra, is the mantra for this age. But why we need to remember any other mantra when it comes to deity worship or any other thing? And it's also mentioned in this book that uh, Brahmana who are trying to use their time in Bra country, Brahmana when they are trying to use their time Ma, in, Brahmanas, yeah. in uh, reciting mantra actually it's kind of a waste of time. Better they use their time in chanting holy name. So I just try to, I'm a bit confused, so I'm trying to understand that why you need to do it anyway. To chant purely means to actually come to the stage of purified chanting. That was the question? Or was that the answer? <laughs> Oh, but did, did you translate his questions? No. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Okay, we'll do it anyway. <laughs> so, Prabhupada says to simply chant Hare Krishna and not do anything else that is given to us by the spiritual master will not have the effect. We have to follow the instructions of the spiritual master. So he, he's given us many other activities in devotional service. And they're important. But they support and they help purify our consciousness where we can chant quality japa. So worshiping the worshiping the deity, hearing and, and reading Srimad Bhagavatam, taking only Krishna Prashadam, all of these are going to help bring about a higher consciousness when we chant the holy name. Yeah. But when, when one reaches higher consciousness, as it says, then the holy name is the only sadhana. <laughs> there's nothing else. <laughs> and there's devotees who simply chant. They're on that platform. They don't, they don't want anything. They don't need anything. Chanting is their whole activity. <laughs> We had our kirtan last night. A Joshua. He can chant for hours. We can leave and he'll still chant. <laughs> I've seen him chant for eight hours, you know. And he, I mean, he loves every minute of it. I mean, he's tasting that holy name. It's, I'm using him as an example.
And within our society, and of course outside of our society, there are many great souls who simply focus on that as their means of self-realization, their means of spiritual connection. But you can't jump up to that level. You have to gradually go up to that level by purifying your consciousness by taking the process as given by the spiritual master. Mm. Okay, follow up. Question was more completely appreciate that nine process of devotional services are meant to develop our taste in holy name. But why you need to remember any other mantra? Is are those mantra also meant to uh, develop the taste? Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Hadvaita Gadadhar Srivasadi Gauda Bhakta Vrinda. That's required. <laughs> and that's also Maha Mantra. <laughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. That's Maha Mantra. That was a Maha Mantra in the previous age. <laughs> there are many powerful mantras within the Shastra. And mantra brings about a certain level of realization according to the type of mantra you're chanting. <laughs> Mantra is powerful. I mean, there's people who can chant mantras that are like if you want to curse somebody, they know the mantras, and if they chant that mantra to curse somebody, that curse will have an effect because they they study these mantras. So mantra is powerful. <laughs> Vedic mantras all have a particular direction by which it brings about a particular result according to the type of mantra. So, yes, these other mantras will be helpful in our practice of devotional service. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, yes. Oh, yes, Prabhu. Okay. I wanted to ask, Maharaj, when we chant the Holy Name, it's a look like uh, we need, we decide something back, like happiness, like the knowledge you say. And the knowledge will reveal everything. So this is uh, something that devotee has to decide. Happiness, pleasure, ecstasy and knowledge. Or just offer the chanting mm -hmm. without any desire. Oh, okay. Nice question. Ah. Uh, okay, so, secondo cantiamo il mantra, Noi ci aspettiamo qualcosa indietro, come il piacere, l'estasi e la conoscenza, oppure dobbiamo cantarlo senza aspettarci niente, o come un'offerta. Mm. It's better not to ask Krishna for anything. <laughs> It's better just to follow the process and happiness, whatever other benedictions that may one may want will come by way of Krishna's mercy, if he wants to give it. <laughs> we can't bring it about, nor should we ask Krishna for these things. We just ask, my dear Lord, let me chant the holy name in such a way that I can please you by this chanting. Dobbiamo pregare Krishna per cantare il Santo Nome in modo che possa 
Let me chant this holy name so I can connect with you. <laughs> Happiness will come, freedom from material suffering, they'll come automatically. So devotees don't really ask the Lord for these things. <laughs> they just do, the, they know it's already there in the process, it'll come. <laughs> and if it doesn't come, then Krishna didn't want to give it to me. <laughs> you can't make yourself happy, only Krishna can make you happy. <laughs> you might say, well, another person can make me happy. But that, that another person is empowered by Krishna to make you happy. <laughs> Krishna is behind everything, <laughs> even in the material sense. No one can do anything without him, <laughs> but he works through his energies to fulfill our desires or to frustrate our desires. You know? He's the, we call it the remote cause. There's the apparent cause, which you see, the remote cause is Krishna, he's there within everything. He's between every atom, he's within every atom, he's everywhere. <laughs> he's in your heart, <laughs> he's everywhere. But he works accordingly <laughs> to how he wants to reciprocate or not reciprocate with the activity of the person. So we just try to please Krishna, that's all. And then everything will be wonderful. <laughs> because Krishna is a, he's a nice guy. <laughs> if you please a person who's nice, immediately they feel grateful and they want to do something to reciprocate. <laughs> But there's another element, because when you try to please Krishna, you automatically become pleased. <laughs> Just by trying to please Krishna, there is an element of pleasure that you receive simply by that effort to please Krishna. Just like, for instance, what is life about? Life means to do good to others. That's what life is. So when you do something good to another, and they benefit from it, don't you feel happy? Yeah, automatically. Because of something you did made them happy, there's a feeling of happiness that comes within you also. So we don't have to worry about getting something, just try to make Krishna happy. That's all, just try to please him. Capiche? <laughs> Poco. <laughs> Ah, he said poco. <laughs> poco, poco, huh? Uh, uh. <laughs> Mamma mia. <laughs> que sera, sera. <laughs> okay, I'm practicing my Italian. <laughs> So I think we should, I mean, there are more questions, but breakfast is from now yes. till what time? 10? Yes. 10.30? Yeah. They won't give breakfast open. Hmm? They won't keep breakfast open until 10.30. Okay, so we, they say you can't live by philosophy alone. <laughs> Take <laughs> prasad. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sila Prabhupada ki Harinam Sankirtan ki